short, but while I was in L.A., I met a guy by the name of Jerry Peterson, who was in a pretty famous band here in America that had a big hit called At This Moment, uh, a short time after I left L.A. So I called Jerry to congratulate him and say he was a great sax solo on the track and, you know, congratulations. So it was just small talk. He said that he had been called to audition for Tina. And he couldn't do it. His wife was expecting a new baby. And so I said, well, you know, do you mind if I go after it? And he was real good friends with Jack Bruno. And uh, he said, I'll, I'll put you in touch with Jackie. Jackie's a great guy. And, um, you know, then take it from there. So he did. I sent my uh, bio off to Jack. And I had some decent credits of that. I'd already toured with Joe. And I was really young. And then when, when I got the the bio to Jackie it was I, I knew some of the guys that they were she was trying out and I never thought that I was going to get the opportunity but they didn't they just didn't like who was there and so they finally called me and they said you know we want you to come out uh, if you get the gig we'll pick up your ticket if you don't sorry <laughs> and so I, I, I made the arrangements it was really called I had trouble getting out the mechanical problems, and I fi finally got there, and they rushed me to, to, to the rehearsal hall, which was this giant room, and management, and crew guys, and so they were, everybody was jumping at the bit, the tour was ready to roll, they, 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 they had planned out to be in production rehearsals, and they needed to fill the spot, and uh, so I finally got the shot. And I walked in and she told everybody to give him an attitude for showing up late. And she was standing in the middle of the room with her arms crossed, shooting daggers at me. And I'm saying, oh, this has been a day from hell already. Now what? You know? And she was, she was great. I walked up. She started laughing. And she said, I told them all to give you an attitude. And uh, she came up and gave me a big hug. And she said, that we're pleased you're here. Let's see what you can she do. She looked at me and she said, what do you want to do? I said, it's your band. What, you know, I'm, I'm here to audition. And I, and I just blurted out typical names. She said, great, we, just, we, just, well, we were just working on that, so let's do that. And then they just, you know, ran the gamut. They just threw everything at me, you know. But I was ready. Uh, you know, uh, I, I think I was naively aware of it. If that makes any sense, I, I knew I knew how she. I mean, she was massive here. I knew she was big in Europe. They said that we were going out for a year plus, you know, and so. But I was, I was just kind of. I don't really. I don't remember really having any nerves. Nerves, you know. I figured, you know, th 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 this is my environment. I'm prepared, you know, and I didn't think about after it. You know, I, I I was totally focused on doing the audition, and I I I don't know why I I'm thinking back now it was kind of crazy thinking it could, you know, because because you're at the point in a career that you go to the next level, or and these opportunities rarely come up, you know, so I guess I was just kind of focused on doing the audition. I didn't think about what came after it, you know. It was only after the audition. When they left me at the hotel, where I just sat there and I said, "Oh my God, this is it! I can't, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't really grasp it. You know, it was really kind of crazy, and I hadn't told anybody, hadn't told anybody that I was going to audition." Then she asked me a couple of questions, you know, how old I was and um, some, some history, and then she said, "Well, what sign are you?" And I said, uh, "I'm a Sag." And she said, well, okay, when's your birthday? I said, November 28th. I know you know. She just kind of looked at me and gave me the, gave me the Tina look. She said, geez, I guess I got a high here because my birthday is the 26th. Yeah. And I, and I just, I, I, I know now that I just fit. I fit with the guys. I fit with her. And I got it. I understood where she was coming from musically and, and as, an, as an entertainer. And I loved that gig. I, that, I, I had the time of my life on that gig, and she was nothing but gold to me. Nothing but the best. 
we, we got on really well as a band. We, even at the end of the tour, we were still getting up and having uh, having breakfast together, and and we had. A, I laughed for a year and a half. I really did, and there, there. I consider them in a lot of ways to be br still brothers, you know. And I still see the guys from time to time. And John Miles was the best man at my wedding, and you know. And I just saw Laurie Wisefield in New York. We we went down to meet him and his wife Patricia, and uh, and of course I saw I saw Jackie when he came through with Joe uh, last summer. Yeah, so I saw uh, Jack Bruno and and the guys from uh, from Joe's band Nick Milo and and Gene as well, and uh, the, the, the brothers. Seriously, you spend that much time with people. Loved him, Jim. Uh, it was hot. It had to, it was, oh my God, it had to be 100. They said it was 130, well, I don't know the, what, in Celsius, I'm not sure, on, on the pitch. Hot, 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 hot. And uh, we were there. We, we went down to Brazil, I think it was like January 1. And I think we played maybe three or four shows in a month. So, the rest of the time, we had way too much time to get into way too much trouble. Well, we were lucky to get out in one piece, but that show was outrageous. I mean, 180, 200,000 fans. Um, it looked like a bowl of Rice Krispies because they were all throwing stuff up in the air. Crazy. They, they popped in. We had Robert Cray with us um, probably for about a month, three, three or four weeks. He was opening for us. <clears throat> and then he would also do a, a tune called A Change Is Gonna Come. It's a, yeah, classic blues tune, you know. The two of them together was outrageous, but hearing Tina sing a blues tune was also, oh my God, you know. Because Tina really is a blues singer, you know. She absolutely killed it, you know. So we had him for uh, about a month, and then uh, uh, Clapton sat in. In, while we were in London, and then Jagger came and sat in with us in Japan, and uh, I think we had Brian Adams somewhere along the way. And <laughs> well, we had a few moments like that. Yes, we're, we're all looking at each other and saying, okay, <laughs> not sure really what that means, but we'll try something different. You know, she's been known to get on the ground and make a few shapes as well. So, you know, a little something like this. No, she, uh, James, James Ralston really um, was able to kind of express and break down some of that stuff and help us through, you know, uh, to create what she wanted. Um, we, we eventually got there. Uh, I was working with Joe and I, I grew a ponytail. You know, and when I first started with Tina, she made me cut my hair. She she wanted a specific look, so she she was like, I, "This is what I want. This is what you got to do." I said, "Okay, no problem." So when I left, I started growing this ponytail, and every time I saw her, she gave me a hard time about the ponytail, right? Because I I didn't keep the look that she wanted. So we we were having dinner, and she, first thing she said to me, "You cut your ponytail. It's gone." I said, "Yeah, that's right." I finally gave up, right? What she didn't know was I had a gift for her. <laughs> so we were eating the dinner, right? And we we're having a big laugh, and everything's going along great. And I said, I said, I said, Tina, I, I have a gift for you. I have something really special for you. Right? And she said, Oh yeah, what is it? <laughs> so I had it in an envelope, like a big envelope, but this up. <laughs> I handed it to her. And she says, You want me to open it? And I said, Of course, I want you to open it, right? So she carefully, she just like thinking it was going to explode or something. She opened it and she pulled it out and she freaked out. She was hysterical. She was laughing so hard. I said, that's for you. <laughs> I was done with Tina and then I, uh, we had done some co-bills with Joe Cocker uh, during Tina's summer European tour that, uh, um, some of the big festivals. <coughs> so I got to see Joe I, I was only home a few weeks, and his manager, Michael Lang, called me and asked me to go back out with Joe. So I, I was with Joe for a long time, probably seven or eight years. And then uh, 
then I think Timmy Capella went back, and then they found uh, a huge groove. And it was like almost like revolving chairs to some degree, you know. And I, I would have always, I would have always, always loved to go back, but the door never opened again. So I don't really want to go out and do long tours anymore. I, I don't have it in me. I, I spend my time working on my own career. You know, I, I've done everything that can be done. The name Renaissance Man came from a friend of mine who is a guitar player here in Boston because I, I'm, I'm really good with my hands. I can build anything. I can, I, I, I just completely rehabbed my kitchen and uh, just beautiful moldings and, and uh, create, just really creative on that side of things as well. So my friend called me what because we play together and we we, we like each other on that level too uh, playing music and stuff and he just looked at me and says well geez you know you're quite the renaissance man and I said well thank you for giving me the name of my next CD so and, and ultim ultimately it's all music to me I, I'm only I'm always looking for a great melody and you can pick that out from many many different places and I found Nissan Dorma uh, because I saw, I saw Aretha Franklin do it on the Grammys. And I just said, oh, my God. I, I, I was familiar with the tune, but not something that would, you know. And I just freaked out. I said, well, I'll just keep that in the back pocket for, for a while. And, and, and as I was putting um, an EP together, a CD with five tunes on it, I was just looking for one more tune that would just kind of really kind of put it together in a full package. And I came across Ness and Dorma, and I took it to, to the guys that I play with, I've been playing with for 35 years. And I said, what do you think about this, and can we make it work? So Mitch Jacor, who's the piano player, my piano player, he kind of was the uh, the foundation to bring everybody else along. And then I had I, I recorded everything live with the with the rhythm section in the studio and Kerry Deadman, who was a trumpet player, he I asked him to write all the horn shots. So so for the five tunes in the middle of the C D that have all the horns on it, that was this is like a compilation, it's bringing everything together, all the stuff that I loved with all the different CDs. I wanted it in one package. That's why the sixteen tunes and I recorded four new tunes. I'm kind of bouncing around here, but I hope you get the gist of it. So those five tunes were all live in the studio with the basic tracks. Then I went out to Chicago and I recorded the horn section in Chicago. And then we took all that stuff and put everything into Pro Tools and we mixed it all together with a really wonderful engineer that I work with all the time, Reg Roger Lavelli. And I wanted to put a CD together that had every genre of music and will we'll carry you through all that and just kind of put you back in in your seat when you get to the end of it, you know. The, the saxophone really is, is the closest thing to a voice, you know, and it's very difficult to, to keep people interested, so you, you have to work really hard at your phrasing and your intonation and the, and the full inter interpretation of the tune, so you, you can do justice to the melody and also do justice to all the players that you have underneath you, you know. Like the last time she came through, I spent a lot of time with the guys because they were here for a few days. And then I went to the show uh, here in Boston. And, and she was magnificent, absolutely magnificent. There's nobody more professional, more prepared, more demanding. Uh, all that mattered was how that, from the moment you stepped on that, sh that stage to the moment you stepped off the stage, what, what, you, what you gave to the people, that was it.